Welcome back, everyone, to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and with me, friend of the show, Brian Lagunas. How's it going, Brian? It's going great, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, always love coming out to Redmond and love being on anything you do. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, super, I'm super excited because I had you come to my user group not too long ago. You spoke at Evolve. Um, good friend. Uh, I'm always excited of all the cool stuff that you're doing. Uh, but first, people may not know who you are, which is a shame. So um, I'll give you a few minutes and, and just kind of like let, let people know who you are. Who's Brian Lagunas? So Brian Lagunas is some guy who lives in Boise, <laughs> Idaho. So I work for a company called Infragistics. And, great company. Yep, yep. We write some great UI controls that everyone should be using. So definitely give those a shot. I like to say I run the Boise office. <laughs> what that means is I work from home. Um, I do a lot of, of things at Infragistics. Uh, I primarily manage all the UWP. Okay. WPF, iOS, Android, Xamarin, Xamarin Forms products. And then I travel the world speaking at many events like I speak at yours. Yeah. And I also am known for running Prism. So Prism. So I, I've, uh, I've, been, I've been a developer for you know, over a decade now. And I've heard Prism a lot uh, in the past because uh, I fell in love with MVVM uh, when I started, I guess, Silverlight, actually, yeah. and then yeah. WPF. Uh, and then now, obviously, with, with all the Windows Phone devices and UWP and now Xamarin Forms, like the, the MVVM pattern that I fell in love with, you know, when I worked at Canon writing printer software, you know, extends now to mobile devices and kind of everywhere. So what is, what is Prism in general? To well, be the, the actual core of what Prism, where it started. Well, it's, it's actually kind of evolved as mm -hmm. with other platforms. So Prism initially started with the Microsoft Patterns and Practices yes. team, right? So they wrote it for WPF. Uh, that's the first generation, I believe, in 2008. And, you know, historically it, already, it came with a little baggage of being an MVVM framework, but okay. technically for WPF it was never an MVVM framework. It didn't even ship with a view model base class. It, it really didn't care. Yeah. It was all about building modular applications using best practices and design patterns that developers should be using anyways, mm -hmm. you know, in any app they build. And it's just more along guidance, like this is how you should be doing yeah. it. Here's all the problems you run into in a production app. We help you solve those sure. so you don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Uh, you know, not long ago, uh, Microsoft said, you know what, we're going to put the PMP team on Azure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when the PMP team said, hey, Brian, you've been with us for a long time. You're passionate about it. Why don't you take it over? So you took over Prism. I it's took all over Prism. yours. And it's all open source? All open source. All open source. Part of the awesome. .NET Foundation. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's on GitHub. And uh, we're moving it forward. So we're working awesome. on a version for Xamarin Forms. Right awesome. Now. So if people don't know what the .NET Foundation is, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but essentially, I think we announced it maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago or so. It's a, a basically a combination of tons of great open source projects that not only Microsoft open source, Xamarin open source, but also people in the community support. So companies such as yep. Infratistics, such as yourself, that we've come together and said these are some amazing libraries that anyone in the .NET ecosystem should be taking advantage of, be contributing to, and there's tons of stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, really good. When you go to the .NET Foundation, you just Google it, you're gonna find all these amazing libraries such as, such as Prism. And now you said specifically around, you have, you have Prism for a bunch of different platforms. Yes. And seeing that Xamarin Forms has an MVVM framework built in, and, and Prism is not an MVVM framework, right? It, yeah. it seems like that would be a good complement to Xamarin yeah. Forms. Well, actually, so yeah. remember when I said how Prism's kind of evolved? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, now Prism is more of an MVVM framework, okay. Uh, specifically in Xamarin Forms, and okay. it's really due to the nature of the platform. Uh, so, for example, you know, Prism for Xamarin Forms relies on MVVM period to work. Yeah. You know, so unlike WPF, you don't have to use MVVM. Sure. Uh, in Xamarin Forms, you have to use MVVM, and honestly, you should be anyways. I mean, if you're not, come talk it's to a, me. It's a nice way of abstracting right, yes. your, your logic and your views. And sometimes it's okay to mix them around. I'm okay sometimes, because yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. In, in a library, but sometimes it's just really nice to make sure you have that, that testability in a way. That's very important. Not only testability, but you're more likely to be able to share your code. Yeah. And then there's a the whole maintenance aspect. Uh, and when you use a framework, any framework, not just Prism, but you essentially create a standard way of developing apps. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to bring on new talent, right? You hire a new developer, you train them the framework and how you use, how you write your apps, and they're up to speed much faster. Yeah. Every app is the same. You know, context switching for developers sucks. Yeah. You know, but if every app is similar and familiar, 
you, you hit the ground running. Yeah, like your navigation paradigms, how you're, 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 you're saying like, this is my view model to my view, these are my models to my right. view model, this is how I do my data access. I think that's kind of an important thing, especially for onboarding. Uh, before I joined uh, Xamarin, I was using a lot of MVVM Cross, which is a, a big uh, MVVM framework for traditional Xamarin yeah. and iOS and Android. It kind of brings data binding into Xamarin, iOS, and Android, where like Xamarin Forms already has data binding, yes. so you don't even have to worry about data binding. That's, that's given to you, right? Yes. And there's commanding set up, which can be improved for yes. sure, and there's some commands, but there's always room for improvement, especially as, um, as a third-party library. You can evolve your library, where Xamarin Forms is the core package, and you can build on top of it and, and add and spice it up for, you keep saying, we were, Brian and I were talking earlier, it's just like, all about productivity, right? Yes. I started creating template packs like years ago. Not only for, I remember I created my, created my very first Xamarin plugin and I was creating every project manually and I was modifying all the CS projects. I'm like, yeah, we're not doing that. Can't do that. I spent an entire day and I was like, this is it. I'm going to put in all my transforms, all this stuff. I say file, a new plugin, and whew, and I was like, you know what would be even better if it just generated my NuGet packet, my new spec for me. Yep. I was like, oh, I can do that too. Done. I was like, if I want to create a plugin, I'm up and running in a minute. And like that's oh, yeah. that's awesome. So uh, Prison for Xamarin Forms, all about productivity, adding some best practices, I assume. Exactly. To it too, and a, some stuff. So what is in what is in Prison for Xamarin Forms? That's our topic today, Prison for Xamarin Forms. Okay, What's all so in there? one thing to realize is that Prism doesn't do anything that Xamarin Forms doesn't allow you to do. Okay. Essentially it abstracts away all the stuff that I don't believe you should be developing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I'll use a small example. Navigation. Sure. Right? Navigation in Xamarin Forms depends on a page instance. Yeah. So if you want to navigate from a view model, good luck. Yeah. Right? But Prism abstracts that complexity away to where you can accomplish navigating from within view models without the tight coupling to views, okay. which allows you to share not only in Xamarin Forms, but you could share that code to other platforms, uh, native UWP or WPF, and sure. for those three people still doing Silverlight. You know, if you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. So, so this problem in, around navigation may be. Uh, I get asked this a lot from developers. Even I, I personally question myself sometimes. Is so should I like pass a, a navigation instance to my 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 view model? Should I just register a click button? You know, in my code behind the right. XAML, or should I use like messaging center and then pub sub stuff? And 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 sometimes in my apps they're all kind of a combination of things yep. again, which. Which, as someone coming into the code for the first time, it, it can be a little bit challenging. Uh, so navigation, that's built in. What else do we got? Uh, so we got navigation. We have uh, MVVM. So essentially, when I say MVVM, MVVM is quite simple. Okay, I can explain it in like two seconds. Yeah. Uh, binding context, instance of a class, connect them, MVVM, you're done. Yeah. Anything else is not related to MVVM like navigation, commanding. Sure. All those things are problems you have to solve regardless of a platform you use. Yeah, Even yeah. if you use code behind, you have to figure those out. Yeah. Right? So MVVM is just a design pattern. Now, the way that Prism does it is we use what's called a, a view model locator. Yeah. But it's not like you normally would see a traditional view model locator. Okay. So traditional view model locators are static. Yeah. I hate static. You, mm -hmm. will, you will not see static in my code because it's hard to test. Yeah. And it's hard to, to be portable. It's good for design, yes. bad for testing, it's, essentially. It's, yeah. It's productive. You can get stuff done and yeah. do some, you know, write your app quickly. Uh, but it, it, it'll paint you in some corners. Okay. Uh, so we actually use an attached property and a convention-based approach. Okay. So you just add an attached property to your view, mm -hmm. and based on convention, we will go find your view model, create oh. it for you, set the binding context, and you're done. Very slick. So you don't have a static class that you have to keep opening for modification. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Add a new property, yeah. go back into your view. Yeah. You know, static resource, you, all that binding stuff. You don't have to do that. Interesting. Very cool. I like that. All right. Well, let's jump into the code. Uh, I'm super excited to see what the advancements of Prism's been doing. We got you up on the big screen. I always like to ask everyone, like, where do I get started? Like, what, what do I do, Brian? Okay. Where am I going? Like, help me. I mean, we're going to have it in the show notes, obviously, but what, what do I do here? In, in... So, it is open source. Yep. So, you want to go to github.com slash prism library slash prism. Mm -hmm. This is all the source code. Okay. And, uh, if you were to go back to the Prism Library repo, we have some samples and stuff we're working okay. on. But this is what you really care about. Uh, we have docs, which is good. Like docs. But like most projects, docs are always kind of the last thing we, we touch, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
But we have, you know, integrated build servers, so we use AppVair. You can see the build status. They can. Uh, you know what, if you want to help support Prism, because it is open source, and I do this in my free time, you can yeah. go watch my, pl my Pluralsight courses. Uh, then it tells you all about the NuGet packages. Right now, I just shipped a, a preview of mm -hmm. 6.3, which has some, some great updates in it, and all the different uh, NuGets that we have. And of course, I want to talk about the Prism template pack. Oh, cool. So like template packs. Oh, I said, big fan of template packs. So if you're getting started with Prism, if you're Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio, install the Prism template pack because it's going to help you get started extremely quickly. Uh, so it's a Xamarin Studio. Whoa, as Xamarin well. Studio add in. Check that out. Yep. That's cool. So now you, you don't get as many cool stuff in Xamarin Studio that you do in Visual Studio. Sure. Uh, but hopefully. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, as the IDE evolves, yeah. more feature and capabilities can be added to it. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, and then of course we're part of the .NET Foundation. So docs, we are in the process of moving to read the docs. So if we go to the source code here, you'll see a documentation. This is the old. Yeah. We have a new docs folder. Okay. We're moving everything into, and now you just go to Prism Library .read, oh, read the, the docs. docs. Yeah. Right, and then that's where Very all the docs cool. are. And then on the Visual Studio Gallery, Prism Template Pack. I'll do a quick demo of that, uh, but it just comes with snippets, item templates, project templates, uh, and one of the most my most favorite oh, things cool. is a little project wizard for creating Xamarin Forms apps. Yeah. Because by default, what it really annoys me is I don't want to create like oh. seven projects. Yeah. You know, especially if I'm doing a demo for a user group, I only want the Android one just for demo sake, right? Yeah. So just give me that one. Yeah. So that you can select those. Yeah, that's nice because the default ones will set up and they'll give you the it. it what the default ones do is says, hey, what's installed on your machine? I have every SDK on my right. machine, right? But I don't necessarily, I, I do Android, iOS, and UWP, or maybe just Android and iOS based on whatever I'm developing for, uh, which is kind of nicer. And you just say, oh, I want these. And you know, if you have to support older Windows 8 One devices, yep. they're there, right? I well, like I can, I, I can probably yeah, say with confidence that Store 8.1 and Phone 8.1 will probably be removed from the Prism template pack in the next major release. There you go. Yeah. Uh, with the, you know, we have Connect next week, yeah. some good announcements coming out. Um, you can expect Prism to evolve with Visual Studio. Yeah, it's kind of nice. And it's all open source, so as, and Xamarin Forms is open source, so you yep. can see what Xamarin Forms is doing in the wild. You can see some, some interesting Mac OS and TVOS yep. branches exactly. and things like that, right? And you'd be like, oh, what, is, what, are, these, what are these developers doing? And let's, right. let's, let's get ready, which is cool. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I figured today uh, we would talk about navigation specifically. Okay. Because, you know, there's a lot to Prism. Yeah. And I wish I had all day to, to spend with you, but we got to focus on something. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what I want to concentrate on today is just kind of going over the basics of navigation and how it kind of works, right? Yeah. So, navigation in Prism is quite powerful. And the way we, the, the reason it is powerful is because we standardize on a URI based navigation schema. Kind of like a website, if you will. Kind of like a website, right? right? So, you, technically navigate to keys, mm -hmm. okay, and it could be anything. Now, here I'm in the app.xaml.cs of my Prism application, and the way I created that is if I go, f I have the Prism template pack installed. Oh, can we, can we look at them? Like, so if you've never installed a template pack and gone yep. to the Visual Studio Gallery, um, it's under what, tools, extensions? Yeah, so if you just go tools, Extension and updates. It's hidden because there's a thousand ways to get things. Yeah, in it's Studio. crazy. Go to online yep. and then just search for Prism Template Pack. And then when it gets installed, you'll see it right down here. Boom. Right there. Yeah. So if you're, if you're like, you know what, you know, Brian, I, I, like, I, I installed the Nougat. I don't see all the stuff that you're talking about. You got to install these separately. Yes. It'll restart Visual Studio and it'll install these templates. I have some for plugins, I have some for Xamarin and Android. Big fan of template packs. Yeah, and yeah. make sure this is automatically updated. That nice. way, every time I push a new update, you get it automatically. That's nice. That's a nice feature that they added in there. They don't yeah. get notified all the time. So that's though, where these came though from. Though I will say, the automatic update always breaks my snippets. Oh. Every time I upgrade, my snippets break. So I got to go fix them. Oh. But I'm working with the with the Microsoft, team. The, the team, to get that fixed. So you got you got code snippets, item templates, project templates, and. Let's look at the project templates. Yes. Yeah, so okay, so file new. I have this installed, so you're going to go File New uh, under C Sharp. I don't have VB. No. If the community wants VB, yeah. they can create them, add do, them. Do you have F Sharp support? Well, I don't have an F Sharp template. Mm. <laughs> Not yet. So, F Sharp uh, community, VB community. Yep, I accept PRs. <laughs> but uh, you'll see I have a Prism category, okay. WPF, Xamarin Forms, and you go create a new Prism uh, Unity application. And so, You'll say, oh, what's Unity? Well, Unity's a, yeah. a DI container, right? 
You're not the, it's, this is not going to put a gaming uh, it's, framework. Yeah, it's, it's not the gaming right? engine. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's, it's essentially a DI container, and Prism relies on DI to function. Dependency injection. Dependency right? injection. Yeah. So the idea there, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it, it's, it's different than the service locator, right? A service locator is like, hey, I've, I've registered this thing, go find this class, go find this interface. Dependency injection is more like, I have a constructor that takes in these three parameters. Yes. It, it will figure it out for you. You register things, and it just kind of passes things down. Yes, and if any of those dependencies had yeah. dependencies, It'll, it would create those as well you. and pass them down the chain. Extremely testable, yeah. very maintainable, extensible. I mean, you name it, yeah. it's and, awesome. And you usually don't see that in my code just because when I open source projects, I don't like to... I don't like magical things working, but yeah. a, a DI and dependency injection is very popular, yeah. especially So on, Prism supports yeah. a number of DI containers, okay. and for the ones we don't, out of the box, you can add easily by yourself. Okay. But I only have a template for Unity for now. Is that your favorite? Do you want to put a favorite What's, on it? I've, only, I've been using it a long time, so I'm comfortable. Is, is Unity from Patterns and Practices It well? is. Okay, that's what I thought. So yeah. I've been using it since you know yeah. a, a while now, back when I was doing a lot sure. of WPF stuff. Uh, so it just kind of stuck with me. Yeah. You know, but... Uh, Unity may not be the fastest for Xamarin Forms. Sure. I think there's some other containers that are faster, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll create templates for those. Okay, gotcha. But this is what I have now, so you'll just double click on that, and then you would ah, pick your wizard. platform, yep. and then uh, it would create those projects uh, for you, so you would just Easy. check, uncheck, That's whatever nice. you want. That's nice, I like that a lot. Uh, but we don't want to sit here and watch all those NuGet packages load, right? So I have an app that I just did file new, mm -hmm. and this is what I got. Cool. So one thing to notice is that we have an, our application now implements Prism application. Which I assume is a Xamarin Forms application yes. plus. It's a Xamarin Forms application plus some, some Prism Magic. Spice. I like that. Right? Okay. And all this application does is it, uh, it creates and initializes all the services that you'll be using for you automatically. Okay. Okay. So, and when you do this, you're going to get an uninitialized method and mm -hmm. a register types. Okay. Now, uninitialized basically replaces your CTOR. You, there's, you mm -hmm. will never you see the C tour here. Yeah. You won't ever really put code in there. So in a normal Xamarin Forms constructor in your app, you say main page equals new main page. So yeah. uninitialized is hey, my app is initializing for the first time. Right. So as you can yeah. see, this project has an app.xaml. Yep. So we have to put our initialized component yep. before we do any type of navigation. Perfect. Okay. So as you can see, we have a navigation service property on this application. Yep. And we're navigating to something called main page. And the, and the navigation service is the, the Prism navigation service, yes. which I assume under the hood is, is going to spice up in a di the, the Xamarin Forms navigation. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. this is built on top of okay. Xamarin Forms navigation, navigation. framework. Yeah. And it just makes it easier to use. Okay. And navigate to main page. So the, one of the important concepts to understand here is that you have to register pages for navigation. Okay. Now, in the initial design, I was thinking, well, I can just reflect through all the pages and do it for you. Sure. But I decided against that mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. Uh, but so, all you have to do, and no matter what container you use, the API is the same, you just say register type for navigation and pass in the page. Okay. Now, the convention says, as the key, I'm going to use the name of the page. Okay. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can, whoops, you can add your own, you know, my special key here. Oh, okay. You just have to make sure that you're navigating to the correct key. unique identifier. The, the key, it, essentially, it's a name of, right? Yes. So you, you, it, by default, kind of like when I do on property change, and I do, uh, I just, you know, on property change, it takes in my is busy, it passes yes. down those names. But I can, I, can, I can have it be whatever I want and notify the UI anything I want. I'm notifying, hey, listen, this key is associated with the key. So you're your little, um, the parameter that you pass in, so the register type for navigation, you have, this is the main page, which by default will use the name of yes. main page, but you can say, ah, oh, whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah, which is kind of nice, because I, you know, I was doing the Evolve application, and I did app links, right? So when you yes. went to the website, that website URL, I had to parse out things, I had to do a bunch of stuff, where really, it's just a, like, a static URL exactly. that I could, so, I could have used. Yeah. I'll get a little ahead of myself, but remember I said navigation is URI based. Yeah. So even though I'm passing in a string behind the scenes in the code, it converts it to a URI. Oh, okay. Now by default, we use relative URI navigation. Yeah. Relative means wherever I call navigate from, mm -hmm. navigate async, I'm navigating relative to where I'm calling it. Okay. So if I'm on a master detail page and I say master detail page view model, yeah. in there I call navigate, 
Mm -hmm. I'm navigating relative to the master detail. Okay. So that means the detail will update. The detail updates. Okay. Yeah. We also have an absolute navigation, mm -hmm. an absolute URI, which anywhere in your app, if you use an absolute URI, it's essentially saying main page equals new whatever. New whatever, You yeah. reset your navigation stick with an absolute. Oh, interesting. So your, your okay. navigation stack's reset, uh, but by default, it's relative. Relative, which is kind of like kind of the reg, the normal Xamarin form. It's kind of exactly. like pushing some pages across. Exactly. Okay. So the reason I bring that up is you're you're mentioning app links. Uh, since we're here talking about navigation, uh, what was that called? Uh, on app link request, request receive, receive URI. Right. Yep. So for those thinking about you know how do I parse this, you know if you get a URI from your your web page yep. to open your app, how do you manage that? Well, because of Prism, we just say navigate async URI. Mm. And you don't have to do anything else. Prism yeah. will do it for you. Very and you'll cool. see where this gets really powerful here in a little bit. Okay. Okay. So let's take a quick look at the main page. And this is all set up for me. My main page, I get some yep. stuff in here, a little bit of data binding. I got my view models folder. And uh, with the main page view model. Now, is the naming is the naming required to be the same? Because I remember when I was using some other frameworks in the past. Uh, you know, it was very important that main page refer to main page view model, and like everything was very much the same name. Is, is naming convention really important? With yeah. Prism? So naming convention it does using use a default naming convention. Okay. So let's let's talk about view model locator. So yep. we have our attached property here. View model locator dot auto wire view model equals true. Yep. That says I'm going to use a convention hmm. to go find my view model and marry everything up and everything happens magically, right? Okay. That's all you have to do. Now the convention says that my views are going to be in the views namespace. Okay. My view models are going to be in the view models namespace. Oh, okay. And the name of the view model will be page plus view model. Okay. That's the convention. That's the convention. But as with most conventions, yeah, you can change it. Okay. Okay, if you don't like the convention, uh, you, you can use whatever you want. Gotcha. This is just what we standardize on. Also, one other thing you can do is, you know, register type has a ton of, uh, register type for navigation has a, a number of overloads. Yeah. Now, Very I want to know, one thing about using the convention-based approach is we have to use reflection mm. to find these objects. Yeah. That's a performance hit. Yeah. If you don't want to take that performance hit and you don't mind creating a small coupling, you can create the you can say main page view model oh. and you map it. And oh. now we're using types and no reflections necessary. Oh, that's nice. That's easy. Yeah, so you, you just gave me the type. I don't need to reflect to find it. Easy. And this is actually really important if your view models are in separate assemblies. Yeah. This makes yeah. it a lot easier. Yeah. Because trying to change your convention to use reflection and generate types dynamically can be a pain. Yeah, and, and often, you know, if I'm inside a Xamarin studio, I even have it so um, appending folder names is off. Everyone's using, you may be using in your, your org, like by default Visual Studio will say, listen, I created this main page, it's in the view, view thing, so it's going to be yep. like my default plus the folder plus this, and you can get down this really rabbit hole yeah. of things. So sometimes in Xamarin Studio, I'm just like, eh, turn it all off, and like everything is in one namespace, which is, um, you know, right. maybe not best practice, but uh, sometimes it's easier for me based on the app I'm creating if it's small. So that's nice. I can just say, hey, listen, here it is, because I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, and it allows you to do it. You can use a convention, or you can override the convention. Mm -hmm. Maybe here's another thing you can do now that we're talking about it. Register type for navigation on idiom. Mm. You can say, depending on the idiom, I'm going to use a different page. Cool. Or depending on the platform. If I'm on a, this platform, yeah. I'm going to use this page. Yeah, so if you have like a, a specific iOS you know, default page that you want yes. to use. You want to use tabs on iOS, master detail on, on Android and Windows. Right. You, you can register so for that. Oh, very cool. Now you can see where the power of using a key identifier really comes in. Yeah. Because I use on platform, I can assign different pages to the same key. Yeah. So none of the logic in any of my view models, none of the navigation logic changes. Yeah. It's all the same. I like that. But depending on the, how, you nav how you register, you'll get a different page yeah. depending on platform or idiom. Okay. So kind of as your apps become more complex, it's, it's, it's capable, Prism is capable of handling these more complex scenarios, but, but by default, if you're just like, hey, I just want to do file new app, yep. right? Like file this is looking app. pretty good, right? Yeah, this, this yeah. is simple, easy. Okay, so we have a very simple page. Mm -hmm. We have a label yep. and a button. Yep. Label's bound to a title, button's bound to a navigate command. That Perfect. means we have a view model. Let's just go check that out. Boop. Right, so here's our navigate command. It's empty right now, mm -hmm. uh, but we want to navigate somewhere, right? 
Well, what we have here, we have, so this looks, so bindable base, that's in Prism, I assume. Yep, so bindable base is a Prism base class. Perfect. And all it is is I notify property change. Okay. You don't have to use bindable base. Sure. At all. Yeah, because I have my own MVVM helper library that has a base view model, yeah. right? Yeah, use that. Okay, Use cool. that, doesn't matter. But by default, that's not bad. I mean, that's nice because literally, this is what mine looks like. It's, it's literally set property ref title. Yeah, no, that's what mine looks like too. What most people great. don't realize is yeah. that set property returns a Boolean. Mm. So you can check if it was set or not. Yeah. Right? Because why isn't property change being called? Well, it's the mm. same value, so it's not going to be called. But you can have other logic based on the result of that. Gotcha. And you got a delegate command in here, which is, is new. So the Xamarin Forms has its own command. What's right. a delegate command? What's the difference? So a delegate command is very similar to the command in Xamarin Forms. Yeah. Uh, the difference is, is that we provide a couple of features that kind of sweeten it a little spice, bit. A little spice in there. So one of the problems with commands is you have to re-raise the change notifications, right? Like, yeah. let's say I have a can navigate, Yeah. right? And I have like an is active property that's bound to a switch or something. Yep. And when that value updates, I need to re-raise or raise the can execute of the command so my button can update its state. So you got some additional boilerplate code for additional no reason. Additional yeah. boilerplate code, but yeah. let me get this in view so everyone can see it here. One of the things that Prism provides you is something called observes property oh. and observes can execute. So observes property says, hey, you know what? Anytime the title property changes, I'm going to automatically raise can execute Except for you. Can, yeah. Okay. Right? And so then your state will sense. update. So you don't have a whole bunch of boilerplate encoding your setters yeah. to raise that notification change. That's nice. Often I'll have something in all of my view models that's called is busy. Like that's just my, that's, that's my, I've always like yeah. for the last five years, like is busy. If I'm doing something in the background, is busy is true. So I put a little indicator, right? Yep. And, but that, I want it to disable. And the nice thing in Xamarin forms it is it disables your button automatically or disables certain controls. But I got to go in and literally in my setter, I go, if it changed, then I got to raise this thing every exactly. single time. So that's kind of nice. Just, yeah, you don't have to do yeah. that now. Is this and using iObservables, just your own implementation? No, this, this basically just uses Lambda. Hmm. And I want to note, this only happens for view model properties. Okay. Only. Yeah. Right? It's not meant for if you have a person property of type person. Yeah. You don't go person.firstname or person.address.street. Sure. We don't monitor those. Okay. Uh, it's just for view model oh, level properties. Uh, another thing that this does is let's say your can execute is just a simple Boolean property. You can observe can execute. Oh. And not only will you use that property as raising the change notifications, mm -hmm. but it will use it as the delegate itself. Oh, cool. So you don't even have to have a can execute if oh, you're just yeah. returning a property. That, I like that. Cool. So it really cleans up your code. Yeah. Uh, I hate those nasty, I hate dirty setters. I don't like dirty setters. Mm. So I like my setters nice and clean. Gotcha. But by default, just like, hey, a delegate command looks very similar to what I saw before with a, a normal command I'm passing in and navigating. Yeah. Well, Other than that, it's the exact same. And of course, we have of t. Yeah. Right? So if you wanted to have a, a you would just have delegate command pass of t in, and yeah. pass in your string or whatever you wanted to do. Cool. Okay, so we're in this view model. Uh, I mean, I, I can run the app. We can take a look at it right quick. It's pretty okay. simple. Just, uh, oh, restoring NuGet packages. That's always uh, it's fun. My favorite, favorite part of uh, project.json, right? Yeah. Every time you build anything, I got I to gotta make sure you didn't change anything. Exactly. It always no. makes me nervous, too. Like, <laughs> oh. All right, so this should just be a very simple, it's a one-page app. There's our main page, so we know our binding's working. Yep. And we have our navigate button. Beautiful. All right, so we need something to navigate to first. Yeah. Right, so let's just create a page right quick. Now, I'm using the Prism template pack because I like productivity. Yep. So I'm going to go to Prism, and we'll do a content page. Mm -hmm. Let's just call this like View A. So what's going to happen here is it created a View A for me. Mm -hmm. It created my View model. Ooh. And it registered it for navigation for me automatically. Magic. Right? I like that. That's busy code. We don't want to spend time doing yep. that. Yep. So like taken that. care of for you. All right. So we have a page. Uh, let's go to here. And let's just copy and paste to save time. And you also notice that the view model locator is always in there, already in there for you. Wires it up for you. Yeah, we're not going to have this. Well, you know what? Let's just we can leave that in there. Why not? And let's copy this out here. And yes, I know I'm going to have to update my constructor. <laughs> Don't do this in production, by the way. There you go. Source of bugs. View A, perfect. Okay, so we're all hooked up. Now, the question becomes. I have this view A, I have a new view. Mm -hmm. I'm in a view model. Yep. How in the heck do I navigate to that thing 
from a view model here. without referencing a page class or registering, uh, referencing any of the navigation yeah. interfaces or properties from a page. Yeah, and often it's, it's I want to navigate and I'm navigating to this other page and there's a way to flip it around that I used to be used to which is that I know the, the data that I want to go to, the view model that is now linked to my, my view. Right. So I'm actually doing uh, kind of view model first navigation, uh, which, which some people may be used to if they're using some different framework. Right. Is, that, is that where we're going here? Uh, or, is it, or not? Or we've registered some keys. So that's the beauty of it. So okay. there's always a camp. Yep. View model first, view first. Yeah. Well, if you really think about it, in Prism, it's neither. OK. Because you're not, you're not navigating to a page. You're not navigating to a view model. You're navigating to a key. A key. All you know is a key. Yeah. And it can be anything. This is especially important in WPF mm. because you can inject view models into contents and have templates and write. Sure. Uh, in Xamarin Forms, it's, it is page first. You're, you have to create page instances. Yeah. But you don't care yeah. at all. Right? So I'm in a view model. All I need to do is ask for my iNavigation service, and I get it. You get it. Because you're using that built-in dependency injection. Exactly. So we need to save this off. And I don't have ReSharper installed because I know people watching this like, oh, you got a ReSharper, just do it for you. Well, I do a lot of presentations, and mm -hmm. you'd be surprised the number of people who don't have ReSharper. I don't have ReSharper. I, I, when, I, when I do presentations, too, it's out of the box experience. Exactly. This is all out of the box. Yep. So we're just going to store that off. So now, all I have to do, navigate service. We're going to say navigate async. Mm -hmm. And our key was view A. Whoop. And, and, if, and if these views are in the same exact assembly, you could probably do a name of and then. Yeah. Well, yeah. I technically wouldn't do that just okay. because you, you're referencing pages okay. in your view model. It kind of breaks the concept. And that's why there's a string property. Yeah. Would, but constants, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I always have a constants file, known, known pages or known keys or something like that. Yeah. And I would use those. But you know what? You can totally do name of. Whatever you're comfortable with, go for it. Now, is this navigate async? It's a task, but I'm in a void. Yeah. Should this be a task? Should it be an async task? Should it be, should it be a waiting on it? Um, you would want to await it. Mm -hmm. You know, preferably you would want to await it, especially if there's a lot of things going on yep. in there, and we'll get to more of that. Okay. Uh, but so let's go ahead and run it. Okay. Then it recompile and re add my nougats again. And then, yeah. <laughs> Got to add those nougats every time you compile. Perfect. And there we go. View A. View A. One, one line of code. Boom. One line of code. And it creates, it, it, got, it went out, it says, listen, View A is registered. And since the view model was linked, that's how it, it just auto did it, right? It Boom. just auto did it. Yeah, nice. Now, Very cool. there's a caveat to this. Okay. This is the only one, and it drives me <laughs> nuts. But due to the limitation of containers, mm -hmm. dependency injection containers, I had to do it. This. For iNavigation service, it has to be named navigation service. Okay. It has to be. It can't, it you be. can't call it nav service. Oh, interesting. This is the only one that has that restriction. And we're sure that's documented fully. It is. It is documented. Now, the reason it's like that is because I'm doing parameter injection. Mm. Because in Xamarin Forms, navigation is based on page instances. Yep. You have to have the page instance. Yeah. So what happens behind the scenes is the view model locator, when it creates the page, it creates the navigation service, okay. associates the service to the page instance, yes. then it does a parameter injection into your CTOR. Yes, and this, and this is because essentially, you think of Xamarin Forms, uh, different pages could have diff different navigations, right? Yes. If you have tabs, each tab could have its own navigation. It's yes. not a universal global navigation. It could be. But it may not be. Yes. Now, people I, I've seen in some code where they're 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 essentially stacking navigation pages, um, and that's probably not great. Now, now I have a question though. Now, I didn't see a navigation bar. Is there a navigation page, or is that just popping up modals? Or how do I so, get a navigation bar in this thing? By default. Yeah. That's modal. Okay. So what the Prism does is it's smart. Yeah. It says where are you navigating to, and what's in my navigation path. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it will, it, it's smart enough to know if I'm inside a navigation page, I'm going to go async. Yeah. If I'm not, well, obviously I'm going modal. Okay, gotcha. Right? So you're saying, well, how do I get inside a navigation page? That's what I want to know. Because all everything I, I do is going to be a root of a navigation page, well, right? Well, the easiest thing to do, if Hit you me. don't need anything custom, just register 
nav navigation page. Did I spell that right? Nope, I missed my G. I'm not used to typing on this keyboard. You know when you work <laughs> from home? Yeah. You have your own keyboard. So just register Xamarin Forms navigation, navigation page, page, right? So I know how to create it. You're in a navigation page. Oh. So let's go ahead and run it. And, and I'm registering for this type, which is just a, the default navigation page. It's the default navigation page. Yeah. Which, by, but, you know, to be honest, I've really never really customized a navigation page too much. And boom. Now we're in there. Now I don't have a title set yeah. on the page, but yeah. we're, in, be we're inside a navigation page now. Nice. I love it. I love it. Very simple. Very cool. Now imagine this inside of Master Detail. Because mm -hmm. you're talking about tab pages. Imagine yeah. master detail yeah. with tabs, each inside navigation pages. Each, it gets complicated. That's why navigation in Xamarin Forms, you have to know, the service has to know about the page. There is no global navigation service. Yeah. Yeah. You just can't do it and have it work reliably. Very cool. Right? So, so yeah. So, what else? Oh, great. We're on, we, we got the view A. Yep, we got the view A. Right? Now we're in the navigation page. Yes. We got the view A. Uh, Another common scenario is like, okay, I'm in main page. When I navigate to another page, I need to pass. I was about to ask stuff. you that. Yeah, how do I get stuff there? Yeah, right. I, if we're I, all just we're all just via these things, I have objects, or I need to pass an ID. Often, I'm going from I have this list of data, and I have an ID, and I want to pass some data across right. to the next, um, um, the next, the next across the wire. So this is where we start talking about navigation parameters. Okay. And this gets really crazy. Whoops. What happened to my? There we go. Right. So I'm gonna create some navigation parameters. And, and this, let's, a, this is a prism navigation. This is a prism parameters. navigation parameters. Okay. So I'll say it's just a dictionary. Uh, okay. Right. So I can say ID and give it a value of object. It could be anything. Oh, cool. So in this case, we'll make it a string. Okay. And I'll just say hello. Right. Yeah. No biggie. And then we just pass it in. Ah, uh, very cool. Okay. So we can create the parameters. Yep. But how do we consume them? So normally what I would do is I have some sort of, um, I would, if I was doing this in normal Xamarin Forms, I would create the page, I would set the binding context, or I'd create an overload on the actual page itself, mm -hmm. right? I would pass it into the page, create the view model from the code behind of the page. Now I'm actually putting a lot of logic, right? Yep. And then what I'm doing is I'm, I'm then going to go and, and maybe parse that stuff on, on, on appearing. Right. You know, start loading some data. Yeah, well, we know we make it so much easier for you. I want to mention this demo is using the latest preview, mm -hmm. six point three preview. That's on okay. NuGet. So if you're going to add it on NuGet package, just make sure you show the pre -release. show the pre-releases. Yeah. Uh, and the reason is because I just added a new, a new member to this interface. But oh, cool. I navigation aware. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that this view model, I'm assuming, is aware of navigation. Yes, <laughs> it, it's in the name. <laughs> yep. So this comes with three methods on it. Oh, cool. I've seen these methods before. They're yep. very familiar. So the new one, so this yeah. is a breaking change okay. from 6.2. Okay. But it's totally worth it because So really a 7.0 is what you're going Well, on. see, Prism's never been on semantic versioning. Oh, interesting. You can do whatever you want. I do whatever I want. Now, I'm thinking about getting on semantic versioning Big with, fan. with this break. Yeah. You know, it's like it's a break. Yeah. Just go ahead and go to 7. Yeah. Version 7, right? Yeah. Uh, Version numbers don't really matter, to be honest. It's all just a number. Well, when you have like UWP and WPF, and they're all different, it's yeah. hard to manage. Ver Versioning is a yeah. pain, just yeah. so you know. Anyway, yeah. so we have on navigating to. Yep. So this executes before the page is pushed onto the stack. Sure. Yeah. On navigated to, this is after the page has been pushed on the stack and is now visible. Visible. And now I have on navigated from. Mm. I have navigated away from this view somewhere else. Okay. To or from. Yeah. Well, like, no. Uh, like uh, from. From, but I could be going back or no? Yes. If yes. you're going backwards, back. if you're leaving this page, page, on navigated from. Got it. Hit it. Got so it. we can say on navigated, on navigating to, or non navigated. You can say, okay, well, Brian, which one do I care about? Yeah, that's a good question. It right? depends. Mm. If you're passing state that you want visible on the view, and it doesn't have to like load like a task or anything like that in the yeah. background, but you need it there immediately. Boom. On navigating to. Okay. Otherwise, if you do an on navigated to, the page will show, the value will set, bindings will update. Yeah, that makes so sense. So you'll have a delay in value displaying. Yeah, so if, you, if you're passing some data across to the next page and you want it to be seen immediately, yes. like let's say the title here that we have. So, yes. So we could take the parameters that are passed in, update the title to it immediately by parsing out that key. Yeah, so I'm going to say, so, hey, if uh, the parameters, 
contains key, what do I call it, ID? I think I call it ID. I think an ID, yeah. And then I can set the title equal, I know it was a string, so I'm just going to hard cast it there. Parameters index of ID. Cool. Boom. Right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and run that. This is very cool. It gets cooler. <laughs> just wait. Like, there's going to be brains oozing out of those cameras, <laughs> of all the wow. viewers. So we're going to go ahead and navigate, and there we go. Hello. Hello. Very cool. Very nice. Right? Okay, so, but parameters are a little more powerful than just a dictionary. Okay. Because we have to interrupt with web a lot. Yeah. We're coming from web pages. Yeah. So what would be really cool is if I could say something like, you know, Hmm. So if, if people don't know what's going on here, essentially this is a very standardized, when you're, we go to web pages, normally there is actually a, a, a key value store that's passed yes. in. And this is actually very familiar when I used to do like Windows Phone development or even w, like several, it's like very URL based. So you would actually pass this URL in like a Windows Phone 7 application. Yes. And, and that's how you would actually pass parameters was via exactly. this type of URL, ID so is two. We take the, UR, the URI being passed in, does it have mm -hmm. parameters, and we parse those down automatically. Oh, cool. Or you can create them yourself. Yeah. So another thing you can do is let's say you don't want to use the parameters object at all. We are a URI. Ah. You can just do that. Very cool. Right? Yeah. Doesn't matter. So if you're, and that's really nice if you're just like, this is a very simple property. I don't need this. I don't need to create extra objects exactly. or anything like that. I just go and then boom, this works. Exactly. Very cool. Okay, so some other cool things about navigation is uh, we have an interface called I confirm navigation mm -hmm. and I confirm navigation async. async. Right? This essentially says, am I even allowed oh, to navigate? navigate? Right? So for example, uh, I have uh, Prism ships with a I page dialog service. We'll just add They're services. Kind of like, like dialog pop-up boxes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll call it page serve, whatever. So we'll store this off real quick because so we need that. And essentially what this is, this is your display action sheet. Okay, yeah, yeah, and your, your dialogues yeah. and things like that that are built in. Because normally, again, you need access to the page. So you may say uh, application dot current dot yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't want we don't want any of that. So we can say display alert async. Mm. Right? And then we have our title. Uh, what else we have in here? We have our message. Well, I can't spell today. Uh, of course we have your accept. And you have a, a cancel. Cool. And then when this pops up, if you hit accept, it's gonna return true, cancel, false. For a can navigate. And this right. gets called, I assume, prior to prior any navigation. To, yeah, yeah. It, but yeah, it checks first. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first checks that's going to happen. So this is going to be the alert. Boom. Cancel. We didn't go anywhere. Accept. Mm. And then, of course, our parameter. We change our parameter so it says two. Too, yeah. Right? So now you can. Very awesome. Am I dirty? Is this form dirty? Does it need yeah. to be saved? So Whatever yeah. has to happen. That will get called first. That will get called first. Brian, this has been awesome. So that's it. And that's just navigation. Essentially, and there's probably a lot more. Yeah. I, um, you have a, you have full plural site courses on this stuff. I do. There's one more thing I got to show you. Okay, though. hit me. You got one more minute. Let's hit this. One more minute. We're running out of time. Yeah. This this is worth it. This okay. is totally worth hit me. it. So there's a concept called deep linking. Have yep. you heard of it? Yep. So let's say I have a view A, a view B, a view C to a master detail page that has a navigation page that goes to a main page that maybe goes to a view A, maybe a view B again. Maybe a My Tabs <laughs> page with a View B tab selected. Maybe okay. something like that, right? Yeah. This is right when the page starts up, by the way. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy. I don't know anyone that would ever really do. Oh, I have a typo. Typo. Oh. Stop. Stop. There it goes. Stop. There we go. View B. So essentially, you have all these pages, and this is a good example of. Maybe this is something that got deep linked in, passed on from a URL navigation. Exactly. All right, so. So essentially Ooh. what's going to happen is no matter how complicated it is, okay. like I said, the, the navigation service in Prism is pretty intelligent. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to build up this entire navigation stack. It started pretty fast. So yeah, yeah. here's view B yeah. that's selected, so let me move this over. Uh, 
so we can see our, so there's view B, we're on my tabbed tab page, page, so my, so view B selected. Yep. So the next page when I hit back is view B, B. view A, next one is main page inside of master detail, so <laughs> I can navigate through in here. Very cool. Okay, now we're modal, because yeah. if you scroll over here, we have view C, view uh, B, view A. Yeah. You see, you be, you A, and now we exit the app when we close again. That's pretty magical. That's amazing. That's amazing. Not only that. I was still in debug mode. Oh. Even in deep links? Mm, you can pass in parameters because now the, it's, it all builds on top of itself, right? So as we're going through, we can pass in all these variables, yep. we can do anything that we want. And each page mm. can get its own okay. set of unique variables. That's very cool. Very so there's cool. a lot more yeah. to this. Yeah. From cleaning itself up, you know, when you pop pages off the stack. Sure. Uh, you know, it clears all the behaviors for you automatically. It sets the binding context to null. It does a lot of things for, for you. you. Uh, there's an iDestructible interface to allow you to clean up your view models. Uh, there's a lot. Yeah. involved in this. And this is nice. It's now testable because our pages are decoupled uh, from our view models and we're just kind of good to go. Exactly, because Very in nice. my tests, these can be mocked. Yeah. You can just, they're just interfaces. They're just interfaces. Faces. I am completely 100% testable. Very cool. Well, Brian, this is awesome. We're going to have so many amazing show notes and we're going to be awesome documentation and point everyone to it and where to get started. Uh, Brian, this has been awesome. Yeah, this I love like, it, man. I mean, this is and awesome. this is just one of the features. We hinted one, on some of the other stuff. Just a little There's a bit. A lot of stuff. And it seemed what's nice about it is that it's, it seems like a very nice, even lightweight complement. Right? It's very lightweight. lightweight. So in the past, Prism's always had a bad reputation yeah. for being heavy. Yeah. It's only because, you know, the developers really didn't understand. Yeah. But you can obviously see how lightweight this I mean, it is. is. It starts up, boom, just like that. Awesome. Yes. Brian, thank you so much for being Thanks on the Xamarin Show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate show. it. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno, and this is the Xamarin Show.